Did you know this stunt in Breaking Bad was inspired by Jackie Chan? It's the fall from the fly episode that's one of the most memorable moments of the show, and it was actually inspired from Jackie Chan's film Dragons Forever in 1988. You can see the stunt in that film is similar as he hits the vat in the factory from the top balcony. In the original Top Gun, a lot of the scenes of the jets flying were filmed in miniature. In order to get energetic camera shake, they built a rig with a drill on the bottom. They had a piece of wood attached to that that was off-centered that caused the camera to vibrate. It's actually the same mechanism used in video game controllers that makes them vibrate. In Watchmen, the actor playing Dr. Manhattan had to wear a blue LED suit in order to get accurate lighting on set for his blue glow. This wouldn't look as good today because it only really works if you're shooting on film because on digital cameras you get weird artifacts like you can see here. They also had lights at the bottom of his shoes so it would illuminate the floor as well. One of the few times Christopher Nolan has done a fully CGI shot is not where you'd expect it. It takes place on Miller's planet in Interstellar, and while they did film most of these shots on location in actual water, there is a shot here that is fully CGI. All the water, the entire background, and of course the robot case are all 3D elements. It's just a good example of combining CGI and practical photography seamlessly. Did you know in the show The Boys, every single driving shot is filmed for real? This may seem obvious, but a lot of driving scenes in movies are done with green screens and VFX, but for the boys, they have a rule where every driving shot has to be done with an actual moving vehicle. Did you know in this scene in Captain America Civil War, the actors are actually running as fast as the cars? While that seems impossible, they actually had what was essentially a really long treadmill on the ground. It's basically a carpet that's attached to a car that is pulling it with the stuntmen riding on it. The only VFX in these shots are the removal of these carpets, but the actual actors are running at speeds near 40 miles per hour. It took about a month of rehearsal to get right in practice, but the final result is worth it. In order to remove blue screens in 1977 for Star Wars, the filmmakers had to expose the film five different times in an intricate process. The first was with a blue filter, then project that onto black and white film, then put a red filter on it and project that onto black and white film, then combine the two black and white films to get what's known as a female mat that can be placed over your camera to block light, essentially creating a transparent background. This allowed them to expose different parts of the film without them overlapping and creating a double exposure. Some of the scenes with multiple different elements needed over 100 exposures just for that one shot. I have a full video on my channel breaking down the different effects in Star Wars, so if you're interested in that, it will be linked below the like button in the description. Did you notice this mistake in The Dark Knight Rises? In the scene where Batman and Catwoman are running away from Bane's men, there's a cool fight sequence with both of them. In the middle of it, however, you can see one of the stuntmen fall for no reason. It's small and most people don't notice it, but it's still funny to point out. Catwoman also completely misses her kick here. Did you know this scene in Independence Day was filmed with real fire? That may seem obvious, but the fire moves through the city, while in reality it would move up towards the sky. To achieve this, the filmmakers turned the miniature city on its side so when they lit the fire, it would roll up through the city. Did you know the highest paying stunt of all time was for a million dollars in 1993 and it was also the most dangerous? Picture this, you're on the set of the movie Cliffhanger and the script calls for the actor to zip line from one plane to another. Sylvester Stallone comes up to you and offers you one million dollars from his own paycheck to do the stunt. Would you do it? This actually happened to legendary stuntman Simon Crane who took the million and did the stunt for real. He actually messed up by going over the plane and had to pull out his emergency parachute to safely land on the ground. Did you know there is a huge mistake for one frame of Jurassic Park? This film is obviously very impressive for 1993. While they did build animatronic dinosaurs, there are scenes that include fully CGI ones. They still look pretty good, but in the scene when the T-Rex picks up the raptor, the raptor actually completely disappears for one frame. With it being in motion, it's pretty hard to notice, but it's still just funny it's in the final movie. Did you know every scene in the movie 300 was filmed inside on a stage? Well, except for one. Everything you see in the movie was filmed using blue screens and CG background replacements, except for this shot here of the horses running. It's because they couldn't get the horses to run fast enough in the small space they used for their set. It's crazy to think about because the lighting on the actors looks like realistic sunlight. Did you know in this scene in The Boys, the whale was built for real on set? For some of these shots, you would need to use CGI, but for the shot of the boat going into the whale, they had a specific rig to push the boat and a practical whale on set that had an animatronic mouth. The only CG in the shot is the addition of some fake blood and some water, but everything else was real. Did you know that in Iron Man, his house is actually entirely CGI? 
Originally it was planned to film in miniature, but having it be CG allowed the filmmakers to make changes in the design. The original shot was filmed in Santa Monica without the house. Leslie Bibb was filmed on a set of the actual room, which was then recreated digitally to match. The house itself was so detailed, if you look in the windows of the spare room, you could see that the bed was made. ILM also added a CG ocean as well to further extend the shot. The Cleave Man effect in Terminator 2 was a real practical cable-activated arm and body suit that could be controlled on set. The liquid metal effect was also practical. They scanned Robert Patrick's head to be made into a model and then carefully sculpted it into a wearable mask that could be controlled remotely for eye and jaw movements. Did you know in the film Night and Day starring Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz, there's a part of the bull sequence where they ride a motorcycle in a bull riding arena and it didn't go as planned. As they exit, the doors were supposed to close and stop the bulls from entering, but the bulls got through. Stunt performers Jimmy Roberts and Kim Shannon Murphy, who doubled Cruise and Diaz, were trapped in a dead end with bulls chasing them, but luckily got away just in time. Did you know Tom Holland took a big risk during his Spider-Man audition? For the auditions, the actors were in the Spider-Man suit, acting alongside Chris Evans, who came in on his day off for their scene in Civil War. Tom has a gymnastics background, so he surprised Kevin Feige and the directors by doing a side flip entrance into a Spider-Man-like landing. This was obviously a big risk if he messed up or got hurt, but it paid off and he got the part. In Tenet, the actors are running down this hill, but in the film, they're moving backwards through time. If you look at the gravel, you can see that it's moving in reverse. Instead of having the actors run backwards up the hill and then reversing the footage, the gravel is actually CGI and added on top after the fact. In the 1984 film Romancing the Stone, there's a scene where Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner's character drive off a waterfall and jump out in mid-air. It's obviously a dangerous stunt, but it actually could have ended much worse. The stunt performer for Kathleen Turner's character was actually a guy named Terry Leonard dressed up as her. This is called wigging, where a male stunt performer takes the place of a woman and it isn't really allowed today. Terry didn't land 100% correct and ended up getting stuck in the whirlpool under the waterfall. He had to be saved by the safety divers and thankfully was okay. In Parasite, most of the time the house is extended using CGI. Other times CGI is used for adding backgrounds to the driving scenes or adding a neighborhood to a random street. They also built an entire set that was set up like a pool to hold water for this scene. In 1964, Stanley Kubrick sued the team behind Failsafe for copying his own film Dr. Strangelove. While each film has different tones, both essentially have the same plot. Kubrick settled in court for having failsafe delayed until his own film left theaters, essentially destroying its box office debut and pushing his film to be the definitive one against the nuclear age. In Dune, Modib is 100% CGI. Now, not Paul, but the actual mouse creature. Its anatomy is based on a jerboa and its movement is based on a kangaroo rat. They also had a puppet on set that they used for lighting reference for their eventual fully 3D character. In Ex Machina, the hardest shot to create wasn't her interacting with the other actors, but it was actually this shot here. Although it seems easy, the fact that her hands are holding the photo still makes it difficult. Her little micro-movements had to be hand-tracked by artists and was very tedious. In Forrest Gump, when Gump meets JFK, the footage of JFK is real and artists had to perfectly match Tom Hanks into the scene. You could actually see JFK begins to shake his hand before Tom Hanks actually gets there. It's a small mistake, but once you noticed it, you can't unsee it. This sequence in the movie Twister took six months to make. This is one of those movies that even though it was made in 1996 before CGI was that advanced, it still looks really good. It includes a fully CGI house rolling onto the street that had to be hand animated by an artist frame by frame, and took around six months to complete. 